Hey there folks, welcome to another edition of A Week with the Reviewing Network. This week we're taking a look at everything that happened between Sunday, February 16th and Friday, February 21st. So, let's begin the week. You know, one of the hardest things about writing these reviews is coming, is trying to figure out how do you want to put this together. Like, you want to start with an intro sentence, intro paragraph to get it to, to get the review going, but then you want to decide whether or not to start with the negatives first or go with the positives first. Usually, I go with the positives first and then the negatives. But in the case of this movie, Sonic the Hedgehog, you really want to start with the negatives because there are some nitpicky things you can easily talk about in this. So. But also the wording of it is really important because I'm trying to figure out how to word this. I, I have right now, we should start by talking about the negatives of the film because there are a lot of things about this movie that can be talked about, whether it's nitpicky stuff or in general just things that are obviously not good. Which, it sounds, it's, that sounds easy enough, but sometimes it's hard to come up with the right words to figure out how do you want to start, how do you want to get this written down so you know so you know people can be invested in what you're trying to say like one of the things i'm talking about right now on this is the how the film is a typical by the numbers kids film but a good typical by the numbers 90s kids film because there are definitely things about it that are really good are bad but there are a lot of things about it that are really enjoyable like As you can see, I'm writing about some of the some more flaws of the film, basically about characters that were entirely pointless in the film. There was a lot of characters in this movie who had really no purpose in here, just to be like comic relief characters, pretty much. An hour and twelve hundred words later, we have a review up for Sonic the Hedgehog. All we gotta do now is publish. And there you go. And Landry Jones returns professional football and after a shaky first half to lead Dallas to a low dub. Yeah, it's the run game. Ooh, trippy. Soccer between uh, Mason Rudolph and Miles Garrett go from here. Where should it go, Dan? You know, it should go to a courtroom, and it's been good to see uh, in the past two or three days, not just Mason Rudolph pipe up again, by the way, I might add, uh, on Twitter with a vehement denial uh, that he used any kind of racial slur, but also to see Mike Tomlin step up, the Steelers step up. The NFL put out a, a statement. That one kind of floored me. I didn't see that one coming. Uh, and then, of course, 
the coup de grace really was Mason Rudolph's uh, agents slash attorneys basically acknowledging in print that Garrett just put himself into a position where he's going to get sued. Good. Go after him. Go after him. There's no way in the world that Rudolph said those things and nobody else in the Browns, including Garrett himself, uh, would have said anything until a week later. No way. No way. Go after him. Go get him. Stag, where do you see this going? Well, I don't know where I, I, I see it going. I agree with Dale, though. I'd like to see him sue him and uh, make him say it under oath in a courtroom that it happened. The problem is you, you can't prove that he didn't say it either because there is no audio. But um, the whole thing is just a, a, a total joke because for, for him to say that, uh, for any, any white person in America who works for a black boss, Mike Tomlin, who has uh, fellow employees about 70% black, plays against players who are 77% black, even if he's the worst racist in America, that's not the time when he would indicate that to anybody. And you don't, you keep that quiet. You well, don't say it on the field in a situation like well, that. Let's mention said, I mean, according to Garrett, he said it while he was tackling him, like like it while he was on the way down to the ground. It's sort of like sweet nothings in his ear. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Go ahead, Dale. It's ridiculous. It, it, the whole thing is ridiculous. Where it should go is away. It should, it, I mean, seriously, if ESPN doesn't feel the need to sit him down and have a, a, another interview with him, where, in which he should have just kept his mouth shut on the whole situation, uh, you got caught in a lie. The lie didn't work. You didn't say anything after the game. You apologized to Mason Rudolph after the game. Do you apologize to a guy if he said that to you? I don't think so. Uh, I think I think he's trying to make excuses for his own bad behavior, and it's, he, he's caught in the line now, and he can't get his way out of it. And by the way, Jesse Smollett called, and he said uh, he agrees. He said, <laughs> no question. All right, <laughs> reminder, keep the comments. Chance Dale, you're first. You know, LB, uh, Antonio Brown announced uh, on uh, one of his many social media accounts this week, I believe, that uh, he's going to go to the combine uh, next weekend or two weeks from now and uh, meet with some NFL teams about the possibility of coming back to the league. Uh, as I understand it, though, he has not yet hired a new agent since firing Drew, or from Drew Rosenhaus fired him. And, uh, you know, so he doesn't have really a conduit to the league. So I just wonder if he's going to be one of those uh, guys that I see when I go to Indianapolis every year standing on the street corner with a sign that says, we'll catch passes for food. <laughs> Is he going to ride by helicopter? That's the question. <laughs> Day and final word. Never, never doubt Patrick Hornquist, even for a second. I remember a couple of years ago after the night that Patrick Hornquist scored the cup-winning goal in Nashville, he looked around and remembered that the Predators made him the last overall pick in the draft. And that still fueled him. So here he shows up on the fourth line this past week. And what does he do today? Scores a couple goals, arguably should have had a hat trick. He's having a terrific year at 15 goals. I don't feel like enough people are talking about it giving him the credit that he deserves, despite bouncing around to a bunch of different lines. Stag, final word. Well, I saw a story that uh, there's a movement afoot to bring Yarmir Yager back and have his number retired, with Mario Lemieux being very much a part of it. Phil Bork apparently went over to check and was talking to Yager, and Yager's up for it. Uh, after he finishes playing next year, when he will be 50, he wants to play to his 50 over there in check, but it's been long overdue. The guy is the third best, not second, third best player in Penguins history, and he, he should come back. He should have his number raised up for the Raptors. There's no way anybody's going to wear that number 68 again anyway. Bring him home. Let the stupid fans, if they want to boo, I, I just can't believe they booed as much as they did in the past. No booing, cheering. Let the guy skate around and have a good time, and let's see the 68 up on the Raptors. All right, and now our final word from social media. It's so nice to have a professional sports team in town that tries to win every year in the Penguins as opposed to the Pirates who try to win five years down the road all the time. So remember to get the WPX. Okay, we're jumping ahead of day because, I don't know, I wasn't feeling well yesterday. I had like a really bad headache right around here, so I didn't really record anything. Nothing really happened yesterday, so I just I didn't do, do anything for Monday, unfortunately. But today is Tuesday, and a package from Amazon came. So let's go ahead and see what's inside of here. And as per usual, I already opened it up, so I didn't see what's inside of it, but there's a couple of things in here. At least I think there is. I got a box set here. I wonder what the... I don't know what... I, oh, yeah, I do know what this is. 
So yeah, there is Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, the complete series, which I thought was coming out two weeks ago, honestly, but I guess not. So, t <laughs> uh, yeah, this came out today, and I already have the first couple of seasons on DVD. I don't know where they are, though, but like with the mini project, I'm going to get rid of those. I'm going to keep this one. So there is that. Really great show. I've... I have seen the first couple of seasons. I have not seen the last season, I believe. Is it the last season? Yeah, I haven't seen season four yet, so. Is there... There's one more in here. I guess the other thing I bought in here it hasn't come yet. But I think I know what this one is. Yep. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Stay in there. Things slipping out as soon as I... But yeah, Tom Hanks, Mr. Ro Tom Hanks is Mr. Rogers really thought he should have gotten a, at least been considered for another Oscar this year for that role. Just a great movie. Just a really great movie. And, uh... I mean, there's nothing more really to say about that one. Like I've already said what I said about it. I think it's a great movie. I think Tom Hanks was great in this movie. It's one of my favorite movies from last year. Really great film. Should have gotten more attention, for, especially um, Mario Heller, who also directed Can You Ever Forgive Me? But yeah, great, great movie. I really enjoyed this one. If you definitely want to see one of the best films from last year, this is definitely that film. Alright, so it's Tuesday night, and of course it's time to check out the theater listings for this week at the Cinemark. And of course everyone's going to be going to see that movie. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be... A, I'm go not going to that one. Uh, Practical Jokers the movie, though, comes out, and I didn't think that was going to be playing there, but... I know my sister's a big fan of that show, but I'm not, so... That one I'm probably not going to see. That's the big one I'm going to see this week, Call of the Wild. Might try to go to an 11.15 show, maybe the 2 o'clock show, depending on whether or not I have the time... Depending, depending on not whether my schedule will work out for that for that day, so... Yeah, so that's the one I'm definitely going to be checking out. Downhill still has all their theaters. That theater's still there. The screenings, I mean, the screenings are still there, which... A little bit surprising, considering that it didn't do great at the box office last weekend, but... Fantasy Island, Sonic the Hedgehog, I want to go see that again at some point. Maybe the week after that, I might go see... After this week, I might see it. Photograph is still there, that's one I still need to see. Birds of Prey, Bad Boys for Life, 1917, Jumanji... Yeah, nothing too crazy, and nothing too crazy or nothing too new. Like, Jumanji is still there. That's still surprising that we're coming up on nearly two months since that movie came out and that's still playing there. And it comes out on Blu-ray next month, too, March 17th. So, yeah, this one seems like it's going to be the big thing I'm really going to be checking out this weekend. So is this like the pop heart cereal where there's cream inside the cereal pieces? Because it doesn't say on here. Okay, so one of the things I forgot to show off yesterday that came in the mail from Amazon, Tex Avery Screwball Classics Volume 1, finally on Blu-ray and finally on a legitimate release. This is the newest release on the Warner Archive Collection. And this has... Let's see how many shorts are on here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it has 20 shorts on here, and I think some of these have already been released on Blu-ray through the Looney Tunes collection, but it's finally nice to have a legitimate Tex Avery collection on blue, is on DVD or Blu-ray for once. And I'm really looking forward to watching these on Blu-ray for the first time ever. It's mostly for the first time ever, because I really love Tex Avery. I have a DVD, a bootleg DVD set that I bought at the Steel City Con a couple of years ago, but this was too good to pass up on it. 18 bucks on this on the, for Amazon. Yeah, I definitely couldn't pass up on this one. And on top of that, another package from eBay came today, so let's go ahead and open this up. 
and I already opened it up beforehand, and we have, I can get it, we have the Black and Gold Victory Parade, another one of these WPXI DVDs, which I'm guessing this is from 20, this is from the same year as the Penguins one down there. Uh, let me see if I can, it, I'm just going to assume that it is, because I think, because this has the same DVD style as that one right there. So this is from Super Bowl 43, I'm assuming it is. Yeah, this was about... I only paid about... What, 10 bucks for this online. It's still factory sealed. I figured why not. I figured why not. I have the Penguins one. I might as well get the Steeler one too from 2009. So let's go ahead and open this up and see if I can... F see what it looks like inside. Which actually took a lot longer than I thought because that plastic wrapping just wouldn't come off. But right, let's go ahead and open this up. And that's not a good sign if the disc is loose. So there's the back. And there is the disc itself. Yeah, nothing too fancy. Like I said, it's just like the one down here on the bottom. But, uh, yeah. That is the Black and Gold Victory Parade DVD that I won off of eBay. You know nothing about ATV's Jon Snow. And yes, that's the only reason I pressed the record button. And so on that note, that concludes another week with the Reviewing Network. As always, if you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. And check out a previous episode of the Week with the Reviewing Network. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the latest Movie Stop episode. Until then, take care.